Hello, and here we are again for another episode of Tom's Gaming World. Welcome, one and all. So, first off, we're going to jump straight into pickups, as usual. And behind me, on what's become the CDI shelf, is a new CDI game. And that is Atlantis The Last Resort. And this is a first-person shooter for CDI, would you believe? And we'll take a look at this in greater depth in a bit, because there's no screenshots on the back or anything. But it's not bad. Not glowing praise there, I know, but over here we've got uh, some PS2 games all laid out, ready to uh, chat about here. Uh, so first up, it's Astro Boy, which I got because I seem to be collecting games published by Sega at the moment. This one's actually developed by Sonic Team. I think it's based on a newer version of Astro Boy. Maybe there was a newer anime at a certain time. 19, 2004, perhaps, this is from. And I played a little bit of this, uh, just in the, the training, and you know, it's quite charming. Uh, nice uh, anime sequences integrated into it. Uh, the controls for the flying were a little bit iffy, I thought. It was a little bit difficult to uh, negotiate flying around, but you know, I think there's a lot of potential here, so I'm going to give this a little bit more of a go. Next up we have Altered Beast, so I've been long and curious about this particular version of Altered Beast. So this is a brand new game, uh, at the time at least, based on the Altered Beast franchise. The main character is involved in some sort of biological disaster, uh, meaning he can transform into beasts. Now I've only played as this wolf creature uh, so far, but there's several different ones in this game. And they all look pretty interesting. Uh, the gameplay is basically fighting through hordes of enemies, but you can only stay in beast mode for so long. So you have to sort of work between the two modes. You can fight as a human as well, but to get through the amount of enemies on screen sometimes, you've got to be able to turn into the beast. So, you know, it's relatively challenging, but relatively simple, good fun so far. I mean, if you can find it cheap, get it. Don't spend too much on it. I think I spent a little bit too much on, on this one. £15. Uh, next to something Astro Boy, that was £10. So, thankfully this next game didn't cost a lot of money at all. About uh, £4 or slightly less. That's Echo, Defender of the Future. Now, I'm familiar with this game because I have it on Dreamcast and played it at the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, published by Sega, as all these seem to be, uh, whereas I know some of the Sega games on PS2 were published by Acclaim, something like 18 Wheeler is uh, published by Acclaim, which is something I've also picked up, I can't recall if I've actually talked about that, I haven't, have I, so we'll take a look at that in a second, uh, but Echo, yeah, Echo's good, I think it's actually better on PS2. Uh, I think it's a little bit more user friendly, it looks a little better on PS2 and uh, yeah I, I like it, I think uh, they nailed uh, the feeling of being a dolphin in this. So if you ever want a proper dolphin simulator, this is this is a pretty good uh, game to uh, try out. So I like Echo, Defender of the Future and it's, you know, it's probably my favourite Echo game and it's very cheap. So again by Sega, it's 18 Wheeler. The game I actually already have on GameCube, uh, but yeah, it seems to be specifically PS2 Sega I, I'm most interested in at the moment. Um, this one, rather than being published by Sega, it's uh, published by Acclaim, which is quite interesting. Now, playing this game again, I realised how hard it actually is. Uh, of course, there's different modes, there's the mini games, the parking mini games and such, but the main arcade race mode, yeah, it's hard to, in typical uh, arcade Sega fashion, it's hard to hit them checkpoints. And yeah, of course, you're driving an 18 wheeler, so those things kind of move pretty slow. So you gotta make sure you uh, destroy the vans, which give you extra time. You really need to do that if you wanna get to the end uh, and win. But again, this was dirt cheap, like Echo. Uh, very affordable game, if you can find it. 18 wheelers, a good game, all in all, just a, a little difficult. So plenty of pickups in today's episode as we move over here to the math system, which has global defence in it. So I picked up global defence 
for the uh, Sega Mass system recently, and this is a pretty great game. Uh, it's two uh, sort of modes you play through. First, you're uh, attacking uh, enemies and missiles from space, and the second, you're defending. So the, there is uh, not only defense in this, but also uh, attack. So you do these two rounds. To move your uh, little vessel around, you have to hold down, uh, I think, the one button on my system controller. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, I like uh, Global Defense. I think it's got uh, it's got pretty good music. It's got nice controls and so very satisfying gameplay. So here we are with Atlantis. What's the subtitle to this game? The Last Resort. That's right. So we're going to play it on Kuriki, I suppose, on some sort of challenge. So this is a first-person shooter for the Philips CDI. Give it a bit of volume. Oh God, not that much volume. A beautiful uh, CG cutscene to begin. Here you, you will uh, get the, the idea that the game doesn't take itself too seriously. And yeah, into the game. So this is a little bit different than a lot of first-person shooters, as you don't actually have your weapon on screen in the traditional fashion. You'll see what I mean in a moment. But it's most comparable with something like Wolfenstein 3D. So the, the early first-person shooters. Doom, Wolfenstein, etc. Here we are. We, the gameplay takes place within a window, which is a little bit peculiar, but you have this sort of border around it. It reminds me of uh, Kefa on the CDI, actually. You can, I think you can strafe. Let me just go back. Oh, what did I do? Try and restart. So, oh, the music's kicked in now, anyway. So I think you can strafe. What button's that? Well, if you move... Yeah, you can strafe. Holding down the button and moving. Anyway, oh gosh. It's not as hard to control as I'm making it look. Here's an enemy. It's like a crab. Hard to tell, really. But yeah, if you ever play Wolfenstein 3D before, you notice this looks very similar to that. Is it a great game? Now, I've played this a little while. The levels are a little, little maze-like, but not too hard to find your way around. There's a variety in the enemies. You see there we've got some bats. But this is a pretty, by the numbers, relatively simple... Oh first-person shooter type game then that despite looking like it was three-dimensional that sort of worm there was I think it was 2d sprites but the way it animates it makes it look a bit 3d so now we defeat oh I was gonna say now we defeat the enemy to go in there now we have to press a button so we use a two button to interact with things like that it enables us to Move into the next area. None of them worms. Couldn't move out all the way fast enough then. So yeah, the controls do feel a little sluggish. I wonder how this would play, play cause I have the trackball for CDI. I wonder how this would play with the trackball. What's shooting at me? But I think you get the idea. Uh, this probably isn't a game you're going to be too uh, amazed by or want to rush out and buy. But there, other than the online uh, shooter game Ram Raid for CDI, I think this is the only other 
3D shooter like this, of this type, available on the format. So if you really wanted to play something like this on your CDI, then this is really your, your best oh, your best option. And it isn't terrible by any means, but it isn't great either. And it hasn't aged particularly well. Whoa! But no, not bad by any means. And the, oh yeah, I'll just show you the uh, cyborg on the sort of hover bike. If we can shoot him. There we go. We got him. Okay, that's it for this episode of Tom's Gaming World. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found something interesting in that little assortment of games there. Uh, some of them are worth a look, I'd say. Uh, we had to get a bit of CDI there, of course, as always. So do hope you enjoyed that bit of Atlantis. And a little bit of Mass System as well for the first time, I think. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Until I see you again for another episode of Tom's Gaming World, it is goodbye and game on.